Hi Flosstube! This is Stephanie the Ivy House Crafter coming to you with my first Stitch With Me video. This should be interesting. I've never done one of these before. I am working on my Saxon Transylvania Band Sampler. This is available in my Etsy store and it's a really big, really involved, complicated, beautiful, fun pattern. There we go. So, I am currently working on this top row, or the top band with these birds and sort of plant things in between them. Uh, the way I have the camera set up, you're going to be seeing everything upside down to what I'm seeing. So, I am this way, but that's okay because the pattern is the same up and down. This is just the only way that I could figure out to get the camera set up. Right now I am working on one of the birds. I am, let's see, for, for the main color of this pattern, the dark green, I'm using DMC 520. And then I'm adding some variegated flosses here and there. This particular floss is DMC, um, 4065. It's some greens and tans and blues, and it's just a really lovely variegated floss. This is my first time ever working two handed. Um, the first time I tried, you know, when I first got this set up and got it started, it took me quite a while to figure out. Um, I realized very quickly that without practice, my left hand was basically useless. But once I gave it a try for a few days. I got to where I can work pretty decently with my left hand. It has to be on top though. I can't I can't use my left hand if I can't see what it's doing. <laughs> this has been a really enjoyable pattern to work on. I love the, just the way the whole piece is looking. It's incredible. I don't really have a plan for what to talk about today. Just kind of flying by the seat of my pants. I went on a walk this morning. Um, I mentioned in my last update video that I'm going to be trying to get in shape. Um, I did running for about a year a while back and learned to absolutely love it. And then I just kind of fell off the wagon with um, getting pregnant and then having the baby and then the, the depression and the antidepressants and, and whatnot. I want to start running again, but I have to take it slow because my legs and my lungs 
do not remember their old strength. And I can't push as hard as I used to. I was never a fast runner. I... I'm the slowest one out there. <laughs> I would be out running at the park. Um, we have a a local park. It's pretty big and very popular among fitness enthusiasts. People go out walking, running, biking, rollerblading, skateboarding, walking their dogs. Um, and I was pretty much always the slowest person there. You know, I'd be running, I'd be doing my thing, and people would pass me all the time. <laughs> Once I was, I was out running, and this woman passed me, and she was speed walking. She was, she was just walking, and I'm like huffing along, and she's just walk, 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 right past me. I've always been kind of slow. Um, in college, you know, going from one building, one class to another, I would be walking as fast as my little legs could carry me, and again, huffing and puffing and just trying to go really fast, and people would stroll past me. You know, they would be meandering and going twice as fast as me. It's ridiculous. <laughs> But I contented myself with knowing that at least for, you know, my purposes in running, it wasn't about speed, <laughs> thank goodness. It was about being healthy. So now at this point, you know, even though I can only when I do try, I, I can jog for like a minute or two. I used to be able to jog for almost an hour at a time. Jog, run, with me it's kind of the same thing. But yeah, almost an hour at a time and then now I can go a couple minutes before my lungs are like, you have to stop now. We're not putting up with this. So I need to get back to just going out a few times a week and being active. So yeah, took a walk this morning. Tried speed walking, or I guess I, well, it's not fast, <laughs> like I said. People would be able to stroll right by me if there were other people out there. I was walking in a different place from where I used to run, but, um... So I was out walking, and it felt nice. It feels... it always feels really good once I get up and, you know, get out there It's just <laughs> getting up that's the hard part. Putting on shoes and going out the door. Once I'm out the door, it's wonderful. Though hot. Definitely getting hot. when I want to work out inside. We used to have a treadmill, but we got rid of it because I wasn't using it anymore. But, um, so now if I want to work out without having to go outside, there's a YouTube channel and they have their own website. It's called Fitness Blender. I'll link it below. 
they have hundreds of free workouts and it's like just a huge variety. They have Pilates, they have weight training, they have cardio, they have high intensity interval workouts, some yoga, they have workouts for any fitness level basically. So I like to put them on and do some cardio or some weightlifting. I haven't done a lot of that lately, but I just I really like them. It's a it's a husband and wife team, Daniel and Kelly. And they just do a great job making exercise and fitness accessible to people of all fitness levels. And yeah, I need to be hanging out with Daniel and Kelly more as well. I really like this floss. These are my colors, y'all. I like these colors. If you're actually watching and not just stitching and listening, you'll see that I'm not exactly going in rows. Um, I kind of try to go a little bit more random when I'm working with this floss. I did one bird a little bit earlier that it was entirely in rows. Let me that was this one. And it's not that it looks bad, it's just you can definitely see that it's in rows. And I like the the random splotches of variegation better. So to me it just looks a little bit more natural. So I don't do them in rows back and forth anymore. I've been thinking more about designs, what kind of things I want to design. And I'm finding very quickly that um, I come up with ideas for designs a lot faster than I can actually design them. <laughs> I've got so many just fun ideas of things that I want to make designs of. But I'm not as fast at designing as I am at thinking of designs. That's okay. Oh, how fun. My husband's yelling at the kids downstairs about doing laundry. Oh, gotta love it. He's usually a really nice guy. <laughs> Sometimes the kids are just kind of lazy. Who on earth could they get that from? Let's see. 
else can I talk about? Hello, Jeff. He's brought up my laundry. Yay, clean shirts. So I hope you don't mind long pauses of silence. I don't mind pauses, generally. Coming up on the end of this floss, I can't use much more of it. I'll go ahead and finish that off. Let's see. Let's see if I can do it in a way that you can see. Probably not. Oh well. I'll talk about something interesting. Let's see. I lived in Japan in high school. My dad was in the military. And we spent four years in Japan. It was pretty, pretty neat. The first time we went, um, you know, Japan has lots of um, festivals for just about everything. We went to the Salmon Festival at one point, soon after arriving in Japan. They had vendors set up for um, selling street foods and stuff. And so we're walking through this festival and everything just smelled so weird. The last year we went to the Salmon Festival before moving back to the States. You know, we walked through and everything smelled exactly the same, except that this time we loved the smell. It was incredible because just over the course of the four years that we lived there, we had learned to love the smells and flavors and sounds and everything of Japan. They had yakisoba, which is um, noodles with some meats and vegetables and a delicious sauce. Um, sometimes here in the States I'm able to get hold of something called tonkatsu sauce or just katsu sauce and that mixed with noodles and stir-fried veggies um, makes a pretty good facsimile of yakisoba but yeah, that was one that we loved another fun street food they had was yakitori chicken on a stick and they would just have like strips of white meat chicken and it was marinated in something delicious and um, you know, threaded onto a stick and barbecued or you know, grilled or whatever so that was tasty one time 
we had snail on a stick. It made my elder sister throw up. <laughs> I didn't mind it. They had chocolate covered bananas with a variety of toppings like sprinkles and nuts and stuff. We had a lot of fun trying a variety of foods in Japan. Um, there was a kind of a hostel type thing that we would stay in when we would go on church trips to Tokyo. And they had this vending machine and it would, you know, you would put in your money and, and say what you wanted and it would heat it up and give it to you. And they had these octopus balls. Just little balls of like <clears throat> some kind of doughy stuff with chunks of octopus in it. And that was fun. We really enjoyed those. Of course, there were like little snack baggies, packages of um, tiny dried fish, like this big, little tiny. Um, they had little um, gelatin cups. So like, they, they, were sur they were room temperature and they came in a bag, like a big bag full of these little plastic um, individual size, like bite size, um, cups of this jello stuff and you would peel the, peel the, the plastic off the top and then gulp the jello down in one gulp. That was fun. I think we can get something like that at the Chinese market here in Salt Lake. Let's see. What other fun things were there? Oh, so I mentioned the Salmon Festival. They had fun um, competition kind of things where um, so it was like a, a big um, field of water and the water was only like a foot deep and they would have all the salmon there in the water and they would have competitions for catching the salmon um, like the fastest the most creative ways of catching the salmon and and you would and they had like races but basically people would you would pay because, you know, you're, you're catching a salmon to take home and eat, cook and eat. But, um, and then you would just, like, jump on into the water. They had boots, like galoshes that you could um, use. And then catch a salmon with your bare hands. And these events were always a lot of fun to watch. My dad participated in a few of them. And they had one where it was it was a race and you'd have to you know they'd have on your mark get set go except in Japanese um, and everybody would jump into the water try to catch a fish and then race to the finish line with their fish 
still wriggling in their hands. <laughs> Then there was the, the free catch one where they would, you know, offer prizes for a variety of things. My dad got a prize for most original catch because he jumped in, reached down and grabbed a fish and jumped out and it was like over in five seconds. Most people they have to flounder around for a while before they can catch anything. And so the judges were impressed that he just jump in, grab the fish, jump out. His prize was a bottle of sake, which is rice wine. And we don't drink wine, so he gave it to somebody else. But it was cool. And then they would have um, places there that you could take your your fish and they would um, butcher it for you and we did that and at one point we got a fish that was I guess pregnant it came with a bunch of eggs and they gave us the the salmon row the eggs to take home we had no clue what to do with them dad fried them and they turned into little rubbery balls that were completely inedible. And apparently that's not what you do with salmon roe. <laughs> it's supposed to be eaten raw. That was an adventure. Funny thing is now I don't, um, you know, all these years later, I'm actually, um, not quite vegan, not quite vegetarian. I I don't eat meat. I try to avoid eggs and dairy and stuff like that. I try to focus mostly on eating fruits and vegetables and grains and beans and and stuff. I'm not always good at it, which is why I need to work on losing weight. But um all of these wonderful Memories in Japan are foods that I don't even eat anymore But that's okay. I love looking back on my time and just remembering how awesome it was Well, I've been going for almost 28 minutes and my phone is going or not phone my camera is going to cut out at some point very soon so I will just end it here Thank you for listening to my ramblings, and I'll be back next week with a regular floss tube update. Bye!